Hello, and welcome to AGX Media. Today's guest is a master of analyzing various markets. Speaking with us is Mike McGlone, a commodities analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence. But first, if this is your first time joining us, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel, as well as check out agxpay.com to learn how the power of modern silver money can help you claim financial freedom. And now, to our interview. Mike, it's a pleasure to meet you, and thank you for joining us. Hey, Nick. Thanks for having me on. All right, let's get straight to it. You're a veteran analyst, particularly focused on commodities markets. So I need to get your take on what we can expect in this new decade for precious metals. Uh, that um, I'm quite bullish on prices um, going higher. Um, the key thing I'm concerned about is I don't know really what might make that not happen. So um, the last decade has been somewhat bad for precious metals, and I think it's really reversing now. So as of now, as of just last year, gold, let's start with the number one precious metal, has made a new high in terms of the euro, Canadian uh, dollar. Um, the Indian rupee, the British pound. I think it's just a matter of time it does that in the dollar. Um, and it's getting a good catalyst now, I think, with this coronavirus, i.e. what that's doing is helping pressure Chinese GDP. It might tip the scales for some increasing stock market volatility. And the U.S. is already pricing in another E. Now, the number one catalyst last year for gold to break above that $1,400 resistance was when the Fed started an easing cycle. Now, you know, the market's starting to price freeze. Um, a lot of people don't believe it yet, but me being one of those people who comes from the market, so the market's already right. It's always right. So to me, it's a matter of time. So I'm quite bullish precious metals. I think most of the sector is going to follow palladium. Palladium is a bit expensive. It's made new highs. Platinum is probably one of the most cost effective and I hate to say cheapest or coldest precious metals that should catch up. And silver's kind of in the middle. So quite bullish on gold. Yeah, this project in particular is very much about silver. I'm curious if you can dive in a little deeper on your thoughts about how this metal will perform. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm bullish on silver, but only to the extent I'm bullish on gold. And that's part of the problem with silver is typically silver will, out, will outperform gold on a basically a beta by 1.5 or so, 1.4 historically when gold's rallying. But it almost always does that in a weak dollar environment. That's the key thing that it needs. It needs a U.S. dollar to get a little bit weaker and then, then typically will outperform. Also, it has a high correlation with copper because um, silver is mined as a byproduct of copper and copper just as we speak now just made a new low in terms of dollars a three-year low um consumers should continue to rally i think it's going to follow gold but as far as it really taking off and doing its typical kind of leverage gold type move which it, it has historically is you need the dollar to peak and i don't see that unfortunately right now but if the dollar we can get a little you know that dollar to stop stop rallying silver should be the one to take off obviously gold will too but silver should be the rabbit. Now, we're speaking today on the end of January, and silver's having a good day, which is good to see. Okay, speaking just a little bit further to silver, that traditional ratio between gold and silver has become considerably blown out. Many people consider silver to be close to an all-time low. What are your thoughts on the long term for the metal? Do you see that ratio closing? Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought that up, because that's part of the reason silver is just plain cheap compared to gold. Um, but let's look at it this way. It's been declining versus gold for, like, ever <laughs> in a way it's, it's i mean and one thing and the key thing is that there's gold gold for a reason i mean historically there's never been more than two percent really that's the average annual supply and we all know it's hard to find but silver you can really bring on supply when you really need it um i.e mining most notably from um, from not south america um but it's um it's it, that's part of the attraction of silver and platinum they're just two cheap. Now, the difference with platinum is it can easily, it's the primary substitute for palladium. So that's just going to be a matter of time once the technology catches up. Silver is this more the macro. And one thing is I really like about silver is this decarbonization trend and advancing technology versus anything to do with decarbonization and solar panels and everything needs some form of silver and copper. So I, big picture, I like silver just in this environment where we're seeing a bit of a macro risk off and markets are really following yields lower. Um, and gold's falling, gold prices are falling, uh, going up because yields are declining. It's a bit of a transition. At some point, silver should catch up. I just don't know when that's going to be. And you need a little, you know, we know 50% of silver now is industrial demand versus in the past it was more, um, it was less industrial and more investment. Yeah. So that's a bit of a weak, uh, kind of a tight spot right now. But, you know, the, the, what you point out, that cheapness relative to gold, gold historically is, um, makes it rather attractive. 
So transitioning to other assets now, you recently released a report focused on another asset that has caught your attention, Bitcoin. Uh, tell us about the correlation that you're seeing between Bitcoin and gold. Well, that's, I think, what's the key thing that's happening in Bitcoin. It's transitioning to a store of value, a digital diversifier like gold. In the past, it was a nascent new asset class. Now it's gaining adoption. And um, the volatility of old, of old and the appreciation of old is past, and now it's moving forward. And I think um, it's going to continue to trade more like gold than has been. So if you look at the like the beta of of um, Bitcoin versus gold, it's increasing. If you look at the correlations, it's increasing depending on how you look. And to me, that's one of my primary things I look at for Bitcoin as far as indication is what gold's doing. And the key thing I think people need to think about at Bitcoin is when you look at gold, you have to really worry about supply. In Bitcoin, that's over. 90% of virtually all Bitcoins that I ever created have been mined. You know, we're running up into the halving soon. And as of next year, the annual supply is going to drop to about 2%, and it's going to zero. That's in the code. Now, in case something goes wrong, that means from an analyst standpoint like me, the only thing that really matters is adoption. And all the indications for adoptions are quite positive. I think investors are starting to pick up on that and, and understand it's not – um, as Satoshi Nakamoto designed, it's not really a good peer-to-peer -peer cash, but it's becoming a good store of value, I see, in a digital form, and um, just like gold. Yeah, I agree with that, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up that point, as we are definitely seeing that Bitcoin is being used more as a store of value than a medium of exchange. But going back to something you said a little bit earlier, do you feel that gold and Bitcoin are competing against each other? Well, I think they're companions. Um, there's some competition, and I think what I'm sensing is um, there's Bitcoin's becoming part of traditional investment portfolios. It's getting there. It's very young as part of this section that would be in gold. But the key thing is, um, you know, the beta has been doing too well. Stock market has been too well. As soon as that starts changing where people are seeking alternative assets, I think Bitcoin will be right up there with gold. And all our indications are that I mean, it's going to continue to trade like gold as far as competition. Sure, maybe it's, I think you look at it more as um, as a companion. Now look at gold. It's as of now, end of January, it's at a seven-year high. Now Bitcoin has a major issue with it's still got to run against that high from 2017. That's going to take a little while. That's around 20,000. Um, but at some point, that should be breached, and it's much more likely to happen if we have gold rallying, and potentially if we have, you know, we're talking about Bitcoin in terms of dollars, if we have a little bit of weakness in the dollar. But one thing gold's telling us is the dollar is weakening. It's just not versus other currencies. It's weakening versus gold. Fair enough. So you're talking about this potential and likely future of a strong bull market for digital assets. Do you see Bitcoin being the sole benefactor in this or will it be closer to the 2017 when we saw Bitcoin drag the whole altcoin market up with it? The latter. I think that's what it's doing now. It's dragging the other digital assets um, um, with it. And that's why I look at it completely in a different way. There's two major currencies that matter. There's Bitcoin, store value, and Tether peer-to-peer -peer cash. Everything else are wannabes. That's the way I see it. Um, and there's 5,000 of them. That's the problem with anybody who's investing in alts. And we have the Bloomberg Galaxy Crypto Index. It's way underperforming. and it should continue to underperform because anytime you have massive supply and ease of entry, it's very difficult to get prices to advance. And I think that's the problem. Now, one or two might win, but look at it this way. At the beginning of 2017, there was only 700 cryptos listed on CoinMarketCap.com. Now there's 5,000. That's pretty easy to get in. Um, and they're all want to do the same thing Bitcoin is. And Bitcoin's already won the adoption race. We know that in technology, once you gain the adoption, you got it. And so far, um, I look at those are the two key ones. Everything else is meh, at least for now. Great observations. Now, I know there's been a lot of controversy surrounding Tether, and I would argue that with the rise of the stablecoin market, there is the potential to see a new contender uh, to take Tether's spot. Uh, and really, when you think about it, projects such as Libra have been an attempt to create a new global standard. But of course, no one has a crystal ball and uh, can read the future. So going back a little bit, what do you think of those stable coins that are backed by a physical asset like gold and silver? Do you see the potential for sound money and for these currencies to be adopted? Or do you feel that they will be traded similarly to how they are now in traditional markets? Probably more the letter as far as functional money. Um, the world has the dollar and it works pretty well and there's electronic versions and um, the issue with anything that tracks something like gold is you have plenty of versions. You have a lot of ETFs that do that and this just might be a better way to do it. Fine. You can put that on your phone. It's easy. You can maybe transact among friends. That might be great. But um, 
they're all there's how many of them <laughs> maybe want to win and i know i mean i used to focus on the last year i focused on a lot of male gold back and made a lot of sense and maybe it's easy to transact but tether's already won the race and that's the key thing i like to say about tether i'm not i'm one thing I like about what I do here is I'm completely objective. My primary goal is to get the markets right. So I was in Hong Kong almost two years ago, and they were really poo-pooing Tether. And partly because I was just pointing out, here's the trend in AUM, market cap. And the key significance for Tether was last year, when the U.S. Attorney General cracked down on them, and the market said, we don't care. That's when I, because we're already, it's, you know, it's, it's staying at one. It's, it's locked there, and the market's already adopted. I said, if the market doesn't care, then I don't care. So my, my key point about adoption, everything else, they're fighting a battle, and there's 5,000 of them they're fighting against. Well, that's fair as well. Uh, but I think there might actually be a third use case, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. So you have Bitcoin, which is a store of value. Great. Uh, you have Tether and its competitors competing to be the future of money. Uh, and what are your thoughts on assets like Ethereum, which provides smart contracts and additional functionality? Too much competition. Um, so let's look at standard analysis. There's Ethereum 2016, 15 was great. Now there's EOS and who knows how many other ones are doing the exact same thing. And guess what? They're all better. And guess what? Their team's really smart. I mean, you hear it, you've heard it. It's, everybody says the same thing. I mean, I've, I guess I'm a little bit older. I've heard this in many different contexts, but I think it's human nature. The classic is, yes, I get it. But your time's passed. I mean, there's just too many competitors and there's, they're much better than you and maybe they'll fail. But that's the key thing I like to point out is, there's just too much competition of too many other entities that ease of entry can do the exact same thing you use better because guess what? They had to, they came in second. So they just took what you did, did it better. And that's where I like to differentiate. There's Bitcoin, Tether, and everything else. Just like Libra. Libra just wants to be the next Tether. And guess what? That's probably not going to work. But they more add value to the one unique store of value that's no one else's liability. What if um, Vital Buterin, you know, gets hit by a bus. What happens to Ethereum? That's the unique thing about um, Bitcoin. Interesting perspective. I appreciate your input. Uh, well, that's all the questions we have for today. Uh, any final thoughts for our, our members? Uh, well, the main, the main thing I think is focus on the value and be careful with trading and the value and in investing. And that's why I think um, people should be looking at gold, Bitcoin, and precious metals. It's pretty good value. Um, and maybe if they get stupid expensive, you can sell some at trading. Good luck. You might you lose your hair like me. I'd be careful of that. Sound advice. And thank you again for joining us, Mike, and take care. Thanks for having me. That's all we have for today's interview with Mike McGlone, Commodities Analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence. So glad that you guys could join us. And as always, if this is your first time, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel as well as check out agxpay.com to learn how the power of modern silver money can help you claim financial freedom. Take care.